Doy ahora la palabra al señor Thor Benesland. Mr. President, members of the Security Council, I'm devoting my regular briefing on the situation in the Middle East to the 28th report on the implementation of Security Council Resolution 2334. The Secretary General's written report covers the period between 19 September and 7 December. As the war between Israel and Hamas in Gaza rages on, 2023 ends as one of the deadliest in the history of this conflict, with the situation deteriorating on nearly all fronts. Mr. President, since the end of the written reporting period, hostilities have continued inside Gaza as Israeli forces advances further into Khan Yunis in the southern part of the Strip, and intensified operation in reported Hamas strongholds in the north, in Jabalia refugee camp, and in Shushayye neighborhood, as well as in Kamal Alouan hospital, intensive Israeli airstrikes continue across the Strip. Over a thousand more fatalities, overwhelmingly Palestinians, have taken place. The toll on civilians, including women and children, remains unbearable. With more than 100 Israeli hostages still held by Hamas, the Israeli army announced it had retrieved the bodies of three hostages, two from tunnels in Jabalia refugee camp, and one woman. On 15 December, the IDF said, that Israeli soldiers has mistakenly shot and killed three hostages in Shushayye. Hamas and other militant factions have also continued to indiscriminately fire rockets at areas in southern and central Israel, including a barrage aimed at Jerusalem on 15 December. The delivery of humanitarian aid in the Strip continues to face nearly insurmountable challenges. Amid displacement of an unimaginable scale and active hostilities, the humanitarian response system is on the brink. Limited steps by Israel, including allowing entry of more fuel, food and cooking gas, and opening Kerem Shalom, Karem Abu Salem crossing for the entry of humanitarian supplies are positive, but fall short of what is needed to address the human catastrophe on the ground. In the northern part of the strip that remains mostly inaccessible to humanitarian actors due to insecurity as well as access restrictions imposed by Israel. Mr. President, in our focus on Gaza, let us not forget that our attention during the first nine months of this year was on a West Bank in crisis with mounting pressures for settlement activity, which I know more than double to reach a new annual record since 2017, settler violence, increased Palestinian armed attacks, Israeli security forces operation, a rapidly deteriorating fiscal and economic situation, and the Palestinian Authority struggling to face these challenges. Most of these trends have continued and intensified. On 8 December, Israeli forces killed six Palestinians, including a 14-year-old child in a local commando in the Fatah-affiliated Al-Aqsa Martyr Brigade during an operation in Al-Faraa refugee camp, which led to exchanges of fire with armed Palestinians. Over 12 to 14 and 16 to 17 December, two large-scale Israeli operations took place in Jenin refugee camp and in Tulkarem, respectively. The operations included exchange of fire with armed Palestinians, Israeli drone strikes, and search operations. In Tulkaram, there were extensive infrastructure damage from IDF bulldozers. 17 Palestinians were killed and dozens were arrested. The Palestinian Authority's fiscal situation continued to be extremely precarious amidst broader economic concerns across the West Bank. Some 150,000 Palestinian workers have been unable to reach their jobs since Israeli imposed strict entry restrictions following the 7 October attacks. Mr. President, I remain concerned about the wider impact of the war in Gaza and the risk for escalation in the region. Daily exchanges of fire across the Blue Line have continued with the risk of miscalculation and escalation, posing a grave threat to regional stability. It is imperative that Lebanon not be dragged into regional conflagration 
and that the parties return to cessation of hostilities under the framework of Resolution 1701. Meanwhile, in the Red Sea, the Houthis in Yemen have targeted numerous vessels by boarding parties as well as by armed drones and missiles. Strikes, strikes have damaged a number of ships and other interdicted by U.S. and other naval forces in the area, raising concerns over the safe, safety of shipping through the vital trade artery. Four major shipping companies have reportedly directed their vessel not to transit through the Red Sea, while Israel's Eilat port has reported an 80% drop in revenue since attacks began. Mr. President, I will now turn to several observations regarding the implementation of the provision of Security Council Resolution 2334 during the reporting period. The violence that has taken place since 7 October in Israel and the occupied Palestinian territory, particularly in and around Gaza, has shaken the region and most tragically the lives of millions of Palestinians and Israelis. The violence has taken, I strongly I strongly condemn the abhorrent armed attacks by Hamas and others in Israel. Nothing can justify the acts of terror that were committed and the, and the deliberate killing, maiming and abduction of civilians and other protected persons. Accounts of the attacks reveal acts of brutality that are impossible to accept and comprehend. I am appalled by the report of sexual violence during the attacks. This must be vigorously investigated and prosecuted. The indiscriminate firing of rockets towards the Israeli population center, which continue to this day, is a violation of international humanitarian law and must cease completely. I welcome the release of 110 Israeli foreign host and Israeli and foreign hostages and reiterate that all remaining hostages must be immediately and unconditionally released in line with UN Security Council Resolution 2712. The magnitude of hostilities between Israel and Hamas and the scope of death and destruction in Gaza have been unprecedented and unbearable to witness. I unequivocally condemn the killing of civilians in Gaza, including women and children. I mourn the loss of every civilian, including 131 UN colleagues, the single largest loss of life in the history of the organization. I remain gravely concerned by the impact of the ongoing hostilities on the humanitarian situation in Gaza. The current conditions are making it impossible for meaningful humanitarian operations to be conducted. I'm also deeply concerned by escalating tensions in the occupied West Bank, including East Jerusalem. Intensified armed exchanges between Palestinians and Israeli security forces, predominantly in the context of Israeli operations, have led to exceedingly high levels of fatalities and arrests. I reiterate that security forces must exercise maximum restraints and use lethal force only when it's strictly unavoidable, unavoidable to protect life. I am alarmed by the lethal attacks carried out by Israeli settlers against Palestinians and by Palestinians against Israelis in the occupied West Bank and Israel. All perpetrators of violence must be held accountable and swiftly brought to justice. I am appalled by the numerous instances of officials glorifying violence, encouraging the killing of civilians. Such rhetoric is abhorrent and must be clearly rejected by leaders on all sides. Leaders have an obligation to clearly and explicitly condemn acts of terror and violence directed against the civilians. I remain deeply troubled by the relentless expansion of Israeli settlements in the occupied West Bank, including East Jerusalem, that is impeding access to Palestinians to their land and resources and threatening the viability of a future independent Palestinian state. I reiterate that Israeli settlements constitute a flagrant violation of UN resolutions and international law and call on the government of Israel to cease the advancement of all settlement activity immediately. Mr. President, this war has once again 
served as a devastating and tragic reminder that there is no substitute for a legitimate political process that will resolve the core issues driving the conflict. It is critical that this important junction to enable the parties to re-engage on the long-delayed political path to a two-state solution. I urge Israelis, Palestinians, the states of the region and the broader international community to work together towards this goal. The UN efforts to support this objective has already begun through active consultations in the region. Our work must continue. The UN remains committed to supporting Palestinians and Israelis in ending the occupation and resolving the conflict in line with international law, relevant UN resolutions and bilateral agreements in pursuit of the two-state, Israel, and an independent, democratic, viable and sovereign Palestinian state, of which Gaza is an integral part, living side by side in peace and security with its secure and recognized border on the basis of the 1967 9th with Jerusalem as the capital of both states. I thank you. Agradezco al señor Thor Venesland por la información que ha proporcionado. Doy ahora la palabra al general de división Pat.